Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, I have been looking forward to Aeronautica Imperialis since I was a wee fella. <laughs> Playing games with aircraft and stuff like that has always been super cool. And with X-Wing out there in the wild, uh, there was always waiting for that other itch to be scratched. Aeronautica Imperialis did have one release uh, from Forge World very many years ago, and it used kind of a card-based activation system, which was, well, it needed a little bit more work from players. So getting anybody to actually play with you was a bit of a mission. Now, though, all these lovely boards and tokens, and it's almost like a fantasy flight game out of the box, but it works perfectly. And if you're looking for an easy way to paint your uh, Thunderbolts or just about any Imperial aircraft, here we go. <laughs> this one works well for any color scheme you can think of. All you need to do is swap the colors out, but I'll talk a little bit about that later. Colors will be linked in the description below. Let's get started. Now I've primed this chap here with some Death Guard Green Spray, which I really like. I think it's a great green and it works very well for a sort of generic military, you know, army green, for lack of a better way of putting it. Now when you get your uh, Thunderbolts or your Wings of Vengeance kit, you'll find you normally get a couple of extra of these little uh, sticks. And I've got one that I've used as the extra stick because, you know, you can pick these up then and be quite messy with them. Oop, if it comes off the base again. <laughs> uh, but I use these to hold on to the miniature while I'm spraying it. So this will take a little bit longer, uh, you know, spraying each plane individually and then sort of setting it aside to dry. But I think it is slightly safer than putting on the old rubber gloves and doing them you know, by flipping them on a sheet of paper. This, I, I, I'm fussy, let's say. Don't really need to be. <laughs> so what I've got, this is a Thonian camo shade, and we're gonna go ahead and apply this with a flat brush. Uh, reason being, as much as possible, we wanna keep our brush traveling in the same direction in nice broad sweeps, which with a round brush, like the shade brush, for example, we're not gonna get quite the same control. Uh, if you want to stick to a Citadel brush, then something like the medium or the large base brush are actually quite good for this. Uh, they do have that tapered edge, uh, but, you know, it's much of a much. What you want is to be able to cover a large area at once without having to go back over it. So let's crack this sucker open, throw it around a little bit, and get started. All right, now I've loaded up my brush, and all I'm going to do is just draw it down, oh, maybe a little bit more, aiming to get this into the recesses to really play up the uh, the depth of detail on these kits. I love these Thunderbolts, eh? These are so cool. But as you can see, this is not terribly taxing. Uh, we're just going in the same direction as often as possible to try and minimize the appearance of any brush strokes. So take your time. And I would suggest you're probably gonna find it easier if you do the top, let that dry thoroughly, then flip it over and do the bottom in the same manner. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is a fairly thin coat, so this will probably be dry for about 10, 15 minutes, but as long as you think you need to leave it to make sure that it is properly dry, then go ahead, flip it over, and do the other side. Now, once it's had plenty of time to dry, you'll see it's deepened down the color a little bit, and it's given us that nice recess shading. Now, if you do have any areas that it doesn't quite settle into the recesses, uh, particularly along the wings here, what you can do is just grab a small layer brush and paint a little bit of that shade into the recess directly. You shouldn't have to do much of that though, this generally works pretty well. Now what we've got is a choice on what color we're going to use for the uh, dry brush stage. Now you could use, hiding in the back here we have Nurgling Green or Underhive Ash. Now this is the same if you were using say blue, you might look at Cronus Blue or Ethereum Blue, you know, how bright do you want to go? Now, recently, I'm finding that I like a slightly sharper, um, you know, edge to things. That contrast of colors, I think, looks much better on miniatures. If you're painting something that you want to look really good for display, you know, you're expecting people to take a close-up look and what have you, then a slightly more subtle transition of color with Nurgling Green might be better. But because I'm painting a gaming piece, you know, I'm, I'm painting a token, for a, for a game, I think a little bit sharper is going to look better because we're going to be standing quite a distance away from this at most times. So I'm going to use Under Hive Ash, but just a quick thought there for you guys. If you want to, you know, replicate this or try it with a different um, color scheme, let's grab a little bit of Under Hive Ash, 
get it into my brush here. And then when I'm confident I've scrubbed sort of most of it out, what I'm going to do, same as with the uh, with the inking, or the shading rather, I'm just going to keep drawing my brush over and over and over again. You'll notice this takes a little while to build up. Just in the same direction as much as possible. Now I might quite honestly actually need a little bit more on my brush. <laughs> so let's dip in again. All right, there we go. That's more like it. What I want to do is catch just those raised edges, and especially along the front of the wings. Uh, we're not worried too much about like this section here on the tail fin, because we're going to paint that a different color. But keeping my brush moving in the same direction as much as possible, let's go ahead and build up that highlight. Now some of these areas you're going to want to go sideways, of course, to catch them. But play around with this. See what you like the look of. You'll see there we've got a nice sharp edge on all of those, well, hard edges, <laughs> which works pretty well. Like I said, I think the extra, the brightness of Under Hive Ash is going to help us better on the table. Now what I've got is Iron Hand Steel. Now you could go ahead and use Lead Belcher or something. Um, I tend to like a slightly brighter, sharper color for this. All this is, I'm mixing in just a little bit of water here. So it flows off my brush smoothly, and we're going to go in and fill in all of the metal details. So engine cowlings, um, you know, weapon mounts, anything like that. This is one where I'd suggest go ahead and take a look at the box art. Uh, that'll give you some pretty good ideas on how much of this you want to put on. Some folks like to go crazy with it. You know, you can paint the, uh, the canopy in with this. I'm going to go ahead and do it pretty similarly to the box art, though. I quite like that slightly darker look. And with all of the silver detailing on, this is what we've got. And remember as well, don't forget rockets <laughs> if you happen to have them. Uh, this is probably the one bit that's the most time consuming, because it's one where you don't want to hit the green that you've already painted. And you're probably going to have to do a couple of coats in some areas to make sure that this is nice and solid. Now, speaking of that, I'm going to paint this dude as an ace. So what I'm going to do is actually paint in this engine cowling, this section up on the top here. Now, it's not going to be silver, but I'm painting it silver because this is going to give me a much better base coat for what's coming next. So I figured I'd just show you before I got to this point. And then let's crack on putting down the silver here as well. All right, so why silver? because it's the easiest one to put copper over the top of. I've got Hashut copper here, and you could go ahead and grab yourself the uh, the copper base paint, but honestly, we had the silver ale already, and this is going to do much the same job. So I'm probably going to have to do a couple of coats of this. Uh, Hashut copper can be a little temperamental, but once I've done that, go on to our next step. And this is just one way that you can mark out your aces. Uh, I know that some folks like to do uh, quite cool patterns on the wings and stuff like that, but this engine cowling, I think, is a really ideal spot for just another quick color. Now, that copper does have a slight translucency, so the little bit of silver underneath is going to make it look a little bit more kind of aged and brassy than if we were to use, say, uh, gold, and I think that looks pretty cool. What I'm going to do now is add some yellow. Uh, we're going to use Avalanche Sunset as the base coat for this. And we're probably not going to do much to make it brighter, to be honest. Uh, we don't want to spend a lot of time doing highlights on this. So as always, just adding a little bit of water into my brush here. And what I'm going to do is pick out a couple of panels uh, on the wings here. Uh, so let's go for this one on the edge here. And what you'll find is you will probably need to do two coats of this, because you'll see some of the green shines through a little bit. Uh, but once you've drawn up close to the edge, let that dry, and then give it a second coat. I'm also going to do this section on the tail fin here, and I'm not going to do the whole tail fin. Uh, I know that's how it is on the box, but I like a little bit of the green still on that fin. So, once I've given these their second coat, they've had plenty of time to dry, we'll come back and see how all of that looks together. 
And while that second coat of yellow is drying, you can get on and start doing your non-oil to all of your metallic areas. Now you might want to hold off and do, uh, say, Agrax Earthshade on the bronze instead, and that's probably what I'm going to do. But this is not terribly difficult. All you're doing is just with your brush, a little bit of non-oil on all the metal areas. Now because I actually need to hold the model now, um, I've gone ahead and put on a rubber glove. Um, you may find it unnecessary, I just have some spray on my hands from something else, so I don't want to mess up the work I've already done. I uh, learned that lesson the hard way painting that night. <laughs> what I've got here is some Corax White, a small layer brush. I'm going to show you how I paint the mirrors, not mirrors, the windows on these things. The trick is, to start, let me see if I can get this on camera. Start up on one side and just paint you know, as quickly as you can. Keep it nice and smooth. Paint about halfway down the panel. Then flip your model around and paint back in the opposite direction so that you're never trying to sort of paint up into the corner from the wrong direction. So there we go, one quick coat of Corax White, and there is stage one of our windows done. So I'm going to finish in the other ones using that same technique. And then once that's dry, we're going to grab some Contrast Ultramarines Blue. Now you can use pretty much anything you like here. Um, I've seen folks doing like red cockpits. Um, Space Wolves Grey also works well here as like a sort of a sky blue finish. But I want a slightly richer color. So what I'm going to do is just get a little bit on my small layer brush. I'm going to start by painting in at one end and drawing it back towards the other. Nice and simple. Now in hindsight, maybe Space Wars Grey would have looked better on this color scheme, something slightly lighter, but oh well, you know, <laughs> I can paint over the top of that if I want. Uh, it would be exactly the same technique. So what I've got here is Ungor Flesh, and we're going to use this to highlight the yellow. Uh, you could use uh, Dawn Yellow or Aerial Yellow or anything you fancied here, but this is going to give us a slightly washed out yellow appearance, which I think is going to look pretty cool. I've got some on my brush, and what I'm going to do, especially along these harder edges, is actually just flick lightly with the edge of my brush, using the side of it, to catch the edge that I want to highlight. So instead of trying to paint a straight line, I'm really letting the brush do the work for me here and shh, cheating. There we go, nice sharp line there. Now you may want to be brave and paint this uh, hook sort of color here, in which case what I would suggest rather than trying to paint a whole line across that panel is just do a little on the side here. You will find this easier without a camera in the way, I promise. Uh, and then just do a little line, sort of leading in, giving us the impression of that panel line, okay? Again, you can be as adventurous with this as you like, uh, and it will be simpler for you guys, I promise. So same technique along the edges of the uh, whoop, back of the wing here. Shh. You saw nothing. And then using Sycorax Bronze, we're going to use the same sort of edge of the brush highlighting technique. And we'll just do in the edges of the engine cowling. Again, this one is purely optional, but I think it's going to add a fair bit once our model is done. And then with those last couple of finishing touches, our Thunderbolt is complete. Uh, what I've gone and done as a final, final touch is actually paint the nose cones on the ordnance underneath. And I use a simple method so that when I'm playing, I can tell them apart. Red for hell fire, blue for sky fire. Now I know they've both got fire in the name, but maybe you could take, oh, hell is red, whatever. <laughs> as long as they're clear to you. And I've just used some Evil Sun Scarlet, a little bit of Calgar Blue. Any old colors that you like for that though, just remember that if you've glued them on, do remember to paint your ordnance. It will really help sell things. So there was a few optional steps in there, and maybe in hindsight I would have liked a lighter color for the uh, cockpit glass, but that's up for you to decide when you go ahead and paint your own.
I think not highlighting the uh, yellow like super crazy helps it blend in a little to this green sort of ground attack uh, look. And I like the bronze across the front. It does look a little bit Death Guard from a distance though. Hmm. <laughs> but again, remember that this technique will work for just about any color scheme that you want to use. So you might spray it Mechanicus Standard Gray, black ink wash, uh, then dry brush it with Dawnstone or something. Um, you could use um, Zandri Dust, Agrax Earthshade, and then a Tyrant Skull or Terminata Stone across the edges, you know, to get different colors for what you're doing. The technique is going to work exactly the same on every single one of these models. So hopefully there, guys, something was interesting to you. As always, feel free to drop a comment in the old box below. And as ever, I always remember to say it. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, guys, and you enjoy the rest of your day.